Hi, I'm Judith Williams, co-founder of SugarWork, and I'm here with my co-founder, Vanessa Liu, and we're going to tell you a little bit about SugarWork and what we do. But before that, I'd like to share with you a story. Vanessa and I had the opportunity to go to a manufacturing site for one of our customers, and we're being escorted through the factory floor uh, by one of the employees, and he was a longtime employee of, of this factory, and we stopped at a machine. And he said, hey, this machine, I, I had to fix it. And he told us a story how when they bought this multi-million dollar machine, it just didn't work. There was something off with the calibration. So they actually brought the designers out from Japan to figure out what was wrong and no one could figure it out. And so this employee, he spent some time and he looked at it and he realized that he could align it and get it to work with matchsticks and rubber bands. And he was able to do this because he'd been working on that factory floor for so long. He had an intuitive knowledge of how these machines worked. And that's what we mean when we say tacit knowledge. Every employee knows things about your business. You know, from those nuanced in-house operations, like how to fix that quirky machine, to simple stuff like where things are. Think about the time when you first started at your company and think about what you know now compared to what you knew then. How many of you spent the first six weeks trying to figure out who you should speak to, which meetings were important ones, how to navigate the procurement process? Where was the best place to get your lunch? This is all tacit knowledge. That knowledge that you just know, or you know it when you see it. And it's 80% of the knowledge you need to keep your business running smoothly. That's tacit knowledge. For the engineer on your team, it's the information about the best approach to use when you work with an existing code base. For the finance director, it's the information about how budgets are set and the financial strategy for the company, and also how those audits really get done. But what happens when they leave this role? Because they get promoted, they get moved in a rework, they quit, or they get fired. Well, that knowledge just walks out the door and away into the world. It may not be useful to anyone out there, but it's gone now. And so new employees end up reinventing the wheel. And that takes time and it costs your company money. Fortune 500 companies lose $31.5 billion annually due to critical knowledge loss. Each time an experienced employee transitions, that can lead to an average of about $350,000 of productivity loss. And we spoke to a chemical company and they said for their critical employees, it's more like $1 million per employee. And due to some key megatrends, the scope of knowledge loss is growing. Employees just aren't staying as long with companies. Hybrid work is exacerbating work silos. And on top of this, over the next decade, 10,000 baby boomers will be retiring every day. You're here. So I know that this isn't news to you, but what are companies doing about harnessing tacit knowledge? What's your organization doing to solve this problem? Over the past 12 months, we surveyed 50 companies on what they were doing to address these trends. What struck us is that many are still reliant on old methods. One Fortune 50 pharmaceutical company shared with us that they use Microsoft Docs and SharePoint to capture knowledge during a spin-off of one of their divisions, refreshing every single day to see if new content had been posted. A Fortune 100 airline said that they relied on spreadsheets to track experts in their organization. There has to be a better way. We can use generative AI to capture and share tacit knowledge. We are entering a new era for knowledge management. What you see here is the shift in the information collection age. I, how many, many of you, I'm sure, remember the revolution that was note, Lotus Notes and taking us to Salesforce and then the always on messaging of Slack. Now we can use AI to help us make sense of all the information we've been collecting as well as the information we haven't. So I'll turn it over to Vanessa to learn a little bit more about exactly what SugarWork does. 
Thank you so much, Judith. So hi, everyone. I'm Vanessa Liu. I'm the CEO and co-founder of SugarWork. So we recently piloted our approach at SugarWork with a tech company who decided to offshore their engineering department. They had a month to do it. And like in many companies, past transitions didn't retain a lot of knowledge. And this time they wanted to make sure that they prevented that because they had all of these customers that were still on the line and the heart of their business, the engineering department was being offshored. They adopted sugar work for this engineering function, pairing experts and learners. The types of roles were QA, DevOps, front and back end engineers, you get the idea. It's basically an entire engineering function. And there were over 130 participants and where we've recorded over 300 sessions. And let me just show you a little bit about how we did it. So first experts and learners were paired on the platform. We gave them templates that we have a library of to drive these very high quality conversations. Conversations were recorded, transcribed and summarized into a single source of truth for how their engineering function actually got done. And then on the, on the purple side, the way that the organization accessed this knowledge was in two ways. One was they were able to use conversational AI to query, and they were also able to look at an output document that we created. Most importantly, all of the various managers and the admin functions were able to track progress throughout the whole organization during the four weeks where this knowledge transfer was happening. It was a very short, compressed period of time. In terms of the results, doing all of this, the process saved the CTO four to six weeks of onboarding time with their new hires as they stood up this new offshore division in India. And so that's a lot of productivity. And in terms of what other managers also said this process enabled them to do, they realized that many of them didn't know exactly what their employees were doing or how they did it, and now they finally understood it. Then they also now have a living set of data that they can continue to query to get insights. Things like what types of improvements can we make across the whole engineering division so that we can be more efficient? Now let's get back to that productivity gain. What does that mean in terms of dollars? Even when new uh, employees aren't productive, we have to pay them. And so that's essentially six weeks that one is paying to learn and we cut that down. So that's $250,000. And since this was an engineering company in a software company, an engineering team in a software company, without that engine humming, they have no business. So that's another chunk of money related to risk avoidance. So that was $20 million of customer revenue that was in play during that month when they were doing that handover. And because we were able to do it smoothly, that was something that they avoided. Now what I'm going to be doing is sharing with you a demo of our platform so you can understand what SugarWork does. And so while I bring that up, what you're going to see is a live version of what we do. This is a manager dashboard of SugarWork. And so what you're seeing is a SugarWork Insights dashboard. So that you're, we're showing you what we actually use internally. Each tile represents a different area that we are doing a knowledge share of. So for instance, this tile is around engineering onboarding, and we can see that there are five groups that are discussing that. We can see an integration with one of our vendors, and there's one group discussing that. Sales Insights is another group. Managers and admins can go into each group and monitor how far those groups are doing when it comes to knowledge share. So over here with these five groups who are all doing engineering onboarding, we could see that group one has started, the other ones have not started just yet. We can view the knowledge share to see exactly where they are. And so what you're seeing right now is what the participants see. In this group, there happens to be two participants, but there could always be more. The two out of the five topics, these are the five topics that it's referencing. So as we mentioned before, we have a library of templates that companies that we are working with can, can draw upon to decide what questions the various functions and the various people participating in the knowledge share have to go through. And this engineering onboarding, these are the five topics. There's one topic around roles and responsibilities. 
a topic around problem solving where we're trying to really just drive out the insights over what common challenges do people face? How do they solve it? What teams and individuals do they go to when problems arise? We also have a section around core technical questions, core process questions, and also wrap up. Things like, what type of information do you know that nobody else knows? All of these questions are customizable for every particular customer and also based on the function. And that's what we do with our customers in advance. And we also then sit down with them about what are the job descriptions to customize and tweak these questions. But back to the knowledge share. So participants can schedule a session. This is integrated into their calendar. So on Microsoft Outlook or on Google Calendar, and they can pick a time that works for them. And when they send an invite, that is when the AI note taker knows to go into the meeting. I won't show you that now, but I'll show you an output of what one of these discussions look like. So here is a summary of a discussion that Liv and Elisa, the two participants had with one another. I'll show you first the raw data that we collected on our platform. So for every discussion, we can see the actual recording of the session. And so you could see that they were screen sharing. And then we have very detailed transcripts of what was discussed. So even down to like Liv's talking about how she's a software engineer here at SugarWork. What does she do? Her responsibilities. And she's going through it in a conversation with Elisa. And of course, this is the level of detail, which is incredibly detailed that it's very, very hard to parse through. So what our AI engine does is we summarize the discussion in a short summary. And this is using OpenAI in this instance in the back end. And then the AI is also drawing out keywords. The AI is also creating a long form summary. So that does a much more detailed play by play of the discussion. And so you could see who was talking when, you could see the level of detail. So if managers are overseeing a knowledge share process and they want to know what's being discussed, they could go to a longer summary and see, okay, are they talking about those things that I really need them to talk about without having to look at the full recording? And then again, you could see the keywords here. Now, what gets very interesting with our platform is that you can access this information in two ways. The first way, is through a query engine. And this is a permissions-based approach where you can get access to those knowledge shares your company has decided you have access to. In this instance, I have access to these knowledge shares, but I could imagine if there was a discussion around corporate development and we didn't want me to view that, I would not see that here. For now, I'm going to pick a few knowledge shares and search through them. And so I can interact with the collected data just by querying it with ChatGBT. So I could ask things like, what challenges um, do a sugar work engineer face? And then this is going through the collected information to come up with an answer. So based on the context provided, these are the challenges that a sugar work engineer faces. And so it's going through all of those transcripts to draw this out. I could also th ask things about why we work with certain partners, for instance. So why do we work with recall.ai? And that's one of the partners that we work with. And so this is, again, information parsed from that interaction that's bringing me that information. So you can imagine for somebody who's just coming in new, you're getting this information. And you could do very specific questions that you're asking. But in addition to this query engine, one of the things that we have been doing too for clients is summarizing information across a whole variety of the discussions. And so for that case study that I presented before, that company Appen, here's a sanitized version of what we did for them. As you recall, we had 130 engineers on the platform, all sharing what they do, how they do their roles. And so what we decided to do with the CTO's prompt was to create an onboarding guide for future engineering hires along these four headers where we can document the technical architecture, the release process, the software development approach, the tech stack. Normally this would take somebody hours to create, but because we were already collecting this information while they were doing the knowledge transfer, we prompted 
our model to come up with a summary across all of these areas so that they could have all of the information in one place. And so this is an example of a detailed document that we were able to do as a result of all the information collected. So that's the demo. And what we wanted to talk about now in terms of where sugar work, where else we see sugar work being applied, we think that productivity gains can be gained in so many other moments of transition from succession planning to succession working. So it's not just about offshoring. You could also think about uh, whenever you have people who are leaving a company, you could have this knowledge transfer. You could also think about the value that could be extracted during mergers and acquisitions and divestitures. You could also think about reorganization expenses when you're going through a lot of movement within a company. You could also think about integrating your agile workforce. So, so many companies now are using independent contractors and when they come in and leave an organization, it's more procurement rather than HR related. So there's no opportunity to really onboard them well or offboard them well, our solution can do that. And so when we were at KM World a few months ago, we asked the audience, what type of workforce transition use cases are they anticipating? And this is what the answers were in the audience of 150. So as you can see, many, many companies are expecting reorganizations or large numbers of new hires. Whenever you have this type of transition, this is where sugar work could be very helpful. And so it's really fascinating to see. So we've heard a lot about Gen AI lately, and clearly it has the potential to change many parts of how we do business, how we do knowledge management capture. And I know many of you are knowledge management experts. Um, most solutions are built on data that is already stored somewhere in electronic form. What we are trying to do at SugarWork is to get the knowledge that is stored in people's heads out so that this could be useful for companies. You're only as good as the talent that you have, but if it stays locked in their heads, it's not helping you. So what we are hoping to do is to help companies maintain that edge by getting that data into a format so that it could be shared across the company. So back to the story that Judith told in the beginning of, of our presentation, if you think about all the things, like the only thing that only that one person knows, if you amplify that across the organization and you think about how you can get that information, we hope that we can be the tool that helps companies unlock all of that special knowledge, which could really change the performance of companies. We're continuing to do research and we're gathering use cases, and we are looking forward to discussing with you what challenges and use cases you see in your organizations and how sugar work can potentially help. So thank you so much. Hi, Vanessa. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. You're mute. Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, uh, uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and, and yes, we saw a lot of comments and questions from the audience. And actually, uh, using AI to capture and uh, scare expert knowledge, actually, it's relative new for people, especially Chinese people. So they got a lot of uh, questions like, because it's very, uh, for them, it's very eye-opening and it's, it's very practical. And just now we uh, have collected some questions from the audience and now we move on to the Q&A. Okay, uh, some, some of them are in Chinese and we have translated them into English. I put them in the chat. And also we will have some friend, some questions from the Zoom, Zoom friends. Yes, 那非常感谢 Vanessa博士刚才的精彩分享 就是关于我们如何利用AI来实现企业核心员工知识的萃取与传承 
那现在我们进入问答环节，如果大家有问题的话，可以在聊天框里，可以打在聊天框里。那 Zoom 里的朋友可以也可以直接打开你的摄像头，然后面对面的提问，向我们的嘉宾提问。好，现在呢，我们来看一下第一个问题。Okay, so first question. Oh, this is about the survey you did on fifty companies. Oh, where we did the survey? So we surveyed across. Um, yes, actually, we, we surveyed. Yeah. Oh, how did we survey? We just did one-on-one -on -one yeah. discussions. With with um fifty different companies over the course of the year, and so we spoke to them about how they were doing knowledge management, how they were capturing information, and and that was how we got the stories out in terms of like an airline using Excel to be able to track experts. We know of pharmaceutical companies who do the same thing, and、uh, when this one、uh, large pharma company was spinning out the consumer division. They were also using Microsoft Word to create the discussion guides, and then、um, essentially asking everyone to meet and then to upload their insights after they typed it in into SharePoint. And so, those are the types of stories that we were able to get over the course of the、uh, over the course of the year, speaking to many different CEO CHROs that we know in our network. Thank you. 那我们第一个问题呢，就是我们刚刚就是我们的 Vanessa 博士他们有分享有提到，他们针对了五十家公司做了调查。那这位朋友问是如是他们是如何展开这个调查的？那这个调查呢，他们是维持了大概一年的时间，然后也是一对一针对每家公司的，然后会向他们就是做一个访谈，就是他们在。内部是如何做知识管理，是如何去萃取专家的企业内部专家的知识，去让他们分享自己的故事。那这些公司呢，它的样本呢也比较突出，它可能有各行各业的，有医药公司，有航空企业。那这些公司就是面临各种各样的问题，可能有内部的改组啊，有新员工入职离职的问题，也有可能内部，比如说销售呃部门、业务部门就是剥离的问题。那他们。一般这些企业呢，我们会发现他们所用的这个知识分享的工具呢，就是比较传统的，可能像用，就是微软的那些可能 SharePoint 啊这些工具，然后然后大家就是日常呢，就是大家在这些平台上去分享他们的见解。那很少呢是使用这个 AI 的。那我们后续呢，就是通过这种 AI， 然后帮助他们去萃取、传承这个专家的知识。OK，Thank、okay, you。The sixth quest, second question in the chat. Yeah, they ask、uh, if the sugar walk has Chinese version. Oh, not yet, <laughs> but we are.、Um, we, not yet, but、um, of course, it's something down the road. Right now, we're focused on English language on the platform. But if you do speak in Chinese, we are able to transcribe that. Also in Chinese, it's just that the instructions would still be in English, and that's something that we are trying out. We might be,、uh, we've been doing some tests for a potential customer in Hong Kong, but we've been testing Cantonese. Yeah, I think it should be on the list. <laughs> yes,、yeah. I think so too. <laughs> yeah. 啊，第二个问题呢，我们一位曹女士她问这个 Sugar Walk 她有没有中文版？那我们。就 Sugar Walk 目前呢，它主要是目前主要是英文版的，但是我们也在探索，就是搞一个中文版的。我们目前也有针对就是中国的市场，可能有一些潜在的客户，包括那些香港的香港的客户，我们目前呢也正在就是探索个搞一个中文版的，去面对我们的中国客户。Thank you. And the next is the next question. Here. It's about the effect, the effectiveness. Yeah. The second question is how to measure the effectiveness of using AI for capturing and scaling expert knowledge, and what metrics can be used. So, in in terms of 
being able to capture and scale expert knowledge, we've been looking at it in two ways. One is um, how often is this information now being accessed through the query platform so we can actually track the number of searches. And if you compare that to um, like what is happening nowadays in the company, you usually have to approach the subject matter experts for that particular knowledge. So hopefully what you would see is that the um, the number of searches would be, uh, should approximate or exceed what is typically done. That's number one. Number two, we are also um, then creating process documents or, or summary documents out of all of the information. That's also another thing too that we are tracking. Um, it's very interesting that a lot of the companies that we are talking to, they like being able to have a summary across different conversations for subject matter experts. So they can ask things like, what are the best practices for for instance, approaching this customer. And it might be that there are a few subject matter, matter experts that provide an opinion. So in terms of that, the metrics are, are much more about, are we getting more ideas out uh, to test and that, that are more, that people in the company are more aware of because now it's in a format that's easily shareable. 全程这些专家的知识它有什么样的指标去可以衡量这个萃取它的一个成果有效性那这里呢主要呃文尼斯他主要提了有两个指标首先第一个就是是一个搜索的频率就是我们在刚才的这个 大家只搜索的一个频率，它会有一个显示这个搜索的专家知识的搜索次数次数，然后去衡量，比如说这个知识对大家而言它是否可能就更有更多的需求，它的一个就有效性，就是这个软件它是否说能更好的去帮助更多
可能公司可能决定，比如说一一名专家，他就是一对一的匹配到可能一名员工，然后也可以就是一名专家匹配到多名员工。这个呢，主要看是我们公司的需求。但当然肯定是，但一对一的这种效果，它自然是更好的。但是我们具体呢，也要是取决于大家的需求，然后我们去 work 会给予相应的支持。Thank you， 我们 Zoom 里朋友有问题吗？ Okay, here is another question. What challenges do you face when using AI to capture and scale expert knowledge? I think like um, the challenges or um, the challenges that we are facing now are less about using AI. To capture and scale the expert knowledge, I think it's much more about making sure that, of course, like you have to look at the accuracy,、um, because this is, of course, based on people talking. The AI is smart, but sometimes it's not that smart in terms of identifying specific industry terms that are that are used. And so, even if you have a, a transcript, you would probably expect about ninety percent accuracy, but not. A hundred percent accuracy, so you would still need to go in to do some checks of of just like the terms that are used, or even like down to people's names. So that's like the part、um, that we are seeing now. If you just think about what the AI does, it's first it's transcribing. The next part is the summary, and the the summarization is actually is is、um, a very very good way of using AI to do. Summarization, but it won't give you a synthesis. So, for instance, a summarization could be, okay, there is this one boat now being surrounded by ten boats. So that's a summary. A synthesis could be that one boat is about to be attacked <laughs> because all the other boats are are surrounding them. So that is a synthesis to take it to the next level. So you can't rely on AI to just jump to that next level. You still need to have Human interaction to do that, but I think that if you just need things to be summarized and taken to like an eighty percent, ninety percent level, AI is very, very powerful in doing that. Especially given that a lot of people don't want to spend the time or don't have the time to document. Yes, thank you. Ah, 针对这个问题呢，是。我们是如何就是在这个用 AI 去萃取传承知识的时候，会遇到哪些挑战呢？那这个呃挑战呢，其实更多的是关于这个，就是我们呃这个知识萃取它的一个准确性。因为 AI 它是很智能，但它也并不是说一个完全达到百分之百的程度，特别是对于那些某些专业性的行业术语的识别，它的精准度它其实是有问题，是有。不能百分之百的，它可能达到一个百分之八十、百分之九十的程度，就是对于我们所有的这些，可能大家比如说专家与学员他们在这个进行会议的时候，那些这些知识保留下来的时候，有很多的就是文字记录，那这些记录呢可能会出现一些就是术语的方面的准确性，那所以这个呢还是就需要我们人工的去检查、去调整、去核对的、去修改的，那、呃。但是这，但是如果是因为你需，就是因为我们大家就是如果说人工的去做这些文件的话，你需要花费很多的时间精力。但是 AI 它可以帮助我们。那如果你对它的准确度可能要要求大概就百分之八十、百分之九十的话，它就可以就是很好的帮助我们。Thank you. And any other questions? Okay, we have、uh, another question. This is about sugar work. What motivated you to establish sugar work? 那这个问题呢是就是是什么呃促使你去创立了 Sugar Work 这家公司 ？Yeah. So Sugar Work is actually the third company that I've started, but the other ones have been in media and commerce. And my background is I've been straddling corporates and startups throughout my career. I spent 
10 years at McKinsey, the consulting firm. And then I decided to start two companies with a business partner in media and in sports tech. And then I went over to SAP, the large German software company, to run our early stage accelerators in North America. And I've always been very interested in innovation but also in solving business problems, especially when you see large trends. And so one of the big trends that I do see is the fact that there is uh, an aging of the workforce. And if you think about the baby boomers now leaving the workforce, there is just so much knowledge in their heads. And once they exit, then that knowledge can just walk out the door. And I just, I just think that with technologies nowadays, you should be able to really do something about that for the greater good of companies, but also for society. These people have obviously so much experience and it would just be such a shame if we don't capture it. So I just felt that there was an opportunity there, but it also came from talking to people. Uh, when I was leaving SAP and I told them I wanted to start a company that was focused around the longevity sector and the aging sector, they said, well, you know, our big problem is that we have an aging workforce. So what can we do to capture that knowledge? And that just got me thinking quite a lot about this problem. And then when I started talking to these other companies, I realized it's a, it's a problem across the board. Thank you. Vanessa 女士，她的其背景呢，就是在她在哈佛毕业以后，她有很多的多年的，就是职场经验。她在呃，也是几几家公司任职。她曾经担任麦肯锡的合伙人，然后同时呢，也是有两家公司的合伙人以及股东。那她呢，后也后来也在 SAP， 然后担任重要职位。那在 SAP 就是离开 SAP 以后呢，她就是比较就是关注一些，她比较关注一些比较创新，比较。比较就是聚焦去如何解帮助企业解决一些问题，他也比较关注一些可能面职场或者社会面临的一些趋势，特别是我们出现了一个就是人口老龄化的问题，那特别是婴儿潮那一代，可能在未来我们是每年都会有很多婴儿潮一代的人退休，那当这些人就是退休离开职场的时候，他们积攒多年的这些经验，这些宝贵的财富呢，可能就。跟着他们也就就是离开了。那这个对不管对公司、企业而言，对社会而言，其实都是一个遗憾、一个损失。那其实这样的话，在这种背景之下，我觉得是有也没有什么契机能让这些宝贵的是财富得以留存下来，并且传承给后续更多的人。那其实这这是一个方面。那另一方面呢，也是在我跟很多人就是沟通交流的时候，就是特别是我在刚。创业的时候，我也跟很多人去沟通交流，我也了解到，就是现在就是社会上，他会有一个老龄化、老龄化的一个劳动力，他们所面临的问题，包括我们在跟很多公司做访谈的时候，也发现他们就是面临这样的问题，特别是就是核心员工离开，不管是离职啊，或者退休，或或者是他们转型的时候，都会遇到一个就可能知识的流失的问题。那基于这样的契机呢，我就是呃创立了跟创立了这家 Sugar Work 这家公司。那也是希望，不管是对企业和的、呃、对社会，对一些老龄化的人口，我们都是一个很大的一个利好。Thank you, thank you. Actually, it's a、uh, it's a great actually it's a great idea to create Sugar Work, a great contribution to both the business and both the society. Yes, and、uh, let's see any other questions. Maybe we have the last question. Yeah, because people、uh, think people think the presentation actually is the shortest. They act, they want to hear more, especially about <laughs> the cases that yeah, there is very practical. It's very useful, and here's. Let's see. Now, can you share more cases of companies where the work has had using AI to help capture and scale expert knowledge? Yes. So we are very new. So I should say that we're a startup, and so we only came out of stealth three months ago.、Um, but we are right now working with a medical device manufacturer, and I think that、uh, Judith had talked about that in the beginning. 
And um, with that, with that customer, we are working with people who are about to retire. So these are subject matter experts. They are on the factory floor. They also are in finance. They're also in operations. And one of the things that we are finding that it's, it's, it's a lot of this is about change management, because if you don't have a culture of capturing information, they're like, why are you capturing, why are you capturing information now? <laughs> and is it because you want to show us the door? So you have to manage that type of conversation very well. But it has been, I just actually just spoke to the CEO tonight and he said it's already been very helpful that they can capture this. Because if you can imagine, you have somebody who's 70 years old and he's the only person in the building who knows pricing. Once he goes, it doesn't transfer it to the next person. They have to start from scratch. So we are finding that it's very easy for the people to use of all different tenures in the organization when we give them the platform, they know exactly where to go. They know how to start a meeting. I think in this day and age now, uh, post COVID, it's people know how to how to send in the note, note taker just by co- going onto our platform. So I think that is very straightforward. And um, we are now also about to work with a large airline, and they also have people who are retiring. And and so that's in check back with us in a few months, and we could tell you the results of that. And we're also about to work with a couple of other companies. One is a real estate company. They want to use us for postmortems. So they want to be able to say, after every project, what did we learn? And uh, what are the things that we should apply to the next time? That's one thing they want to do. A second thing that they want to do as well is to be able to capture the day-to-day knowledge that is typically in someone's head around who do I go to when this problem arises? So they operate these large buildings in New York. And so when the elevator is down, who do they need to call? Or when the electricity is out, who do they need to call? They want to actually use the platform to capture even that type of day-to-day knowledge, which is in an expert or in someone who we call an only. Yeah, thank you. 那最后一个问题是我们文杰森女士就分享一些更多的一些公司可能用这 AI 去萃取分享一些知识的一些案例。那我们最初的刚演讲开始的时候呢，我们也提到了就是那 Vanessa 跟 Judith 他们去呃拜访一些他们的客户，是一家是是一家医药设备公司，然后他们也面临了很多就是关于员工呃离职退。员工退休的，就是老员工退休了，那这些人才他们的知识就是如何呃保存保留下来？那在他们公司呢，也有就是像刚刚就是我们在呃他们拜访工厂车间的时候，有一个老员工他修了修了就是修好了一个设备，那在这个呢就只有他就是一个人能修，但是如果他离开了，这个就没有其他其他人就不知道怎么办，那这是一个问题，就要需要这样的有经验的人把他的这个。理性知识给留下来。那除了这个工厂这些方面的机器的问题，那我们同时也有可能财务呀、运营啊各方面都会有这样就是相应的，就是要有一个知识传承的一个需求。那其其实除此之外之外，这些更多呢可能跟涉及到一个就是变革的管理，因为企业它是没有一个是说可能知识萃取这样知识分享的一个文化的。那我呢，就是我们是。就需要跟他们去做做这样的沟通。那我也跟他们的就是 CEO， 然后也去对话，然后他们也告诉我，就是这个方法就是对他们其实是是很有帮助的。因为你可以想一想，比如说我们的老员工一个，比如说七十岁了，他就是离开了，但是他呢，就是在比如说在定价方面，他是可能是唯一一个就是知道。这方面的高手，但是他离开的时候呢，那其他人可能就要去从头就是再来去再钻研。那如果有这样的一个平台，能够把这些呃宝贵的这些隐性知识，然后对留存下来的话，那对就是大家呢后续的人都可以就是可能随时的去借鉴学习利用。那这样呢可以去节省很多的可能时间人力成本问题。那另外我们还。有我们的客户，还有一些就是航空公司，他们也面临的是一个可能自身员工退休的时候，关于他们那个宝贵的知识能够留存下来，也有这方面的问题。另外，我们还有一些就是房地产的客户，他们比如说有两个
主要的需求，一个是比如说在项目结束结束以后，大家可能从中学到了什么，那下一次我应该如何去借鉴这次的经验，去去更好的去进行就是后续的任务和项目的实施。那第二个呢，就是能够把我们这些日常的一些工作知识，可以就是留存下来。比如说一些很简单的，比如说这个电梯，呃，在建筑里面，这个电梯坏了该找谁呀、啊？那这个突然停，大楼突然停电了该找谁？那如果有这样的平台，把这些就是知识全部在这样统一的共享出来，那可以大家可以随时的可能找到去相应的人去相应的办法解决这样的问题。那同样的，就是对企业而言，可以节省很多的成本，甚至增加很多增加很多的利润。Thank you, thank you for the great answers. Thank yeah, thank, you. thank you, thank you for your, thank you again for your wonderful presentation. Thank you for your support for Go T K N, and uh, I re look forward to working with you continue to in the field of testing knowledge management, and also best wishes to you, Judith, and the uh, sugar work. Thank you so much. See, hopefully, we can see the Chinese version of sugar work will come out. Yes. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Uh, I think it's nearly eleven p.m. on your side. Wow, it's very late. Yes. Thank you. No, thank you so okay. much for being here in this late. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. If there are any more questions, please, please reach out. Yeah, sure. Thank you, and have a have a sweet dream. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, my Vanessa, she is now in there. It's evening. It's ten fifty-five. We are at ten fifty-five. It's ten fifty-five. We are at 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 ten fifty-five. 或直接就是联系我们，可以通过我们也是联系到 Vanessa 女士，可以跟她沟通。特别是如果大家对这个 Shuggle 的平台感兴趣的话，也可以做进一步的交流。谢谢，谢谢，晚安，晚安。好，那以上呢是今天的就是讲座的分享内容。如果大家。感兴趣的话，需要本我们会后续会发布本场讲座的一个内容的总结，同时也有一个视频的回放。那大家可以关注我们，然后去可以获得这些相应的资料信息。那同时，我也在这里就是跟大家分享一个重磅的消息，是我们即将在今年的十月份的十。大家稍等一下，我分享这个屏幕。我们即将在今年的十月份，十月二十一号。到二十二号，在瑞士的达沃斯举办第二届隐性知识管理达沃斯论坛。那这次论坛呢，我们有线上也有线下的。那关于这次论坛的具体信息和门票信息，大家可以关注我们进行具体进一步的了解。那同时，我们现在也开通了呃早鸟优惠，大家可以随时关注我们。大家可以就是在我们的直播间可以。看右上角，大家点击一下关注，我们后续有会发布更多的隐性知识管理的相关的我们讲座、论坛以及各类可能书籍、文章相关的信息。好，大家如果继续还有其他的问题的话，可以直接可以给我们发消息，我们会随时在线，然后回答大家的问题。好，以上就是今天讲座的全部内容。非常感谢大家的参与和关注，我们下期再见。